Lolita has been in captivity since she was only four years old. She was bought by Miami Sea Aquarium for $20,000 and arrived there on September the 24th, 1970 and has remained her whole life. Miami Sea Aquarium has been under the spotlight for many years for the appalling conditions that Lolita has been kept in. The pool is so very small and provides no shade from the midday sun. Along with poor water quality, being fed food which is decaying and having to perform in shows, even when ill, and with little intellectual stimulation, it is surprising that Lolita has survived this long. Her health has suffered a lot, from sunburn to eye infections and respiratory infections. Her teeth are worn down from chewing on the concrete walls and gates, from frustration and boredom, but she is a fighter and against the odds she has survived. She was captured in Puget Sound, along with other young orcas, and belongs to the endangered southern resident orca population. Today there are only 73 orcas in this population, and they are listed by the US as an endangered species under the Endangered Species Act. There are three pods in this population, J, K and L, and Lolita was captured from L pod, and it is believed that an orca called Ocean Sun who is the oldest living orca in the southern resident community, is her mother. Between 1962 and 1973, 263 orcas were caught in the waters of British Columbia and Washington. 12 died during capture and 50 were sent to aquariums, one of which was Lolita. The remainder escaped or were released. Of those sent to aquariums, 27 of the orcas were from the southern resident population. All but one of those have since died, and that is the Lita, who has now been in captivity for 52 years. The Southern resident orcas are endangered for many reasons. There are contaminants such as PCBs, DDT and PBDEs, which are now banned from use, but which remain in the sediments. As orcas are at the top of the food chain, these contaminants can accumulate in high levels in the orca's body and can compromise their immune and reproductive systems and the development of fetuses, causing miscarriage. There is also growing concern that the noise produced by vessels may be impacting on the ability of the southern resident hawkers to echolocate to find their food. Studies have shown that they may avoid areas within their foraging range which have many vessels and that when there are more vessels around and salmon are scarce, they spend more energy and less time feeding, which impacts their growth and reproductive success. Whilst transient orcas also face these problems, their numbers are growing and sightings of them in the Salish Sea have increased at certain times of the year. The main difference between the southern resident orcas and the transient orcas is their food source. Transients are mammal eating, whilst the southern residents eat Chinook salmon which makes up 90% of their diet in the summer months. Unfortunately, since 1980, when the numbers of salmon were first tracked, they have decreased in number by a dramatic 60% and they have also decreased in size. So the southern residents are struggling to get enough energy from their food to survive and if Lolita were to be released into this environment, she would also suffer, except that she would not just be released back into the wild to fend for herself, more on this later. In March 2022, Lolita retired from performing. This is because for a marine park to show whales for entertainment purposes, they must hold a special exhibitor's license by the US Department of Agriculture. This license was not renewed, as after many years of procrastination, the US Department of Agriculture has finally conceded that the tank that holds Lolita does not meet the minimum standards outlined in the Animal Welfare Act. The Lumi tribe, who are based in the coastal area of the Pacific Northwest region of Washington State, have advocated for Lolita to be released from Miami Sea Aquarium and given her the Lumi name, Scali Chapchnat. She has also been known as Tokate, and this is the name I'm going to use, as I think I'm saying it correctly, and it is a much more appropriate name for her than Lolita. It is looking as though the Lumi Nation's hopes of her release and that of many other people could actually become a reality. I was so excited to read that on the 13th of December 2022, the new owners of Miami Sea Aquarium, the Dolphin Company, stated that they were 100% committed to efforts to transport Tokate 
to her native waters near Puget Sound. And then, at the end of March, the Dolphin Company entered into a formal and binding agreement with the Friends of Lolita to bring her home. It is reported that the philanthropist Jim Ursay, the owner and CEO of the Indianapolis Colts, has made a substantial financial contribution to the fund to release Tukate. This is just such wonderful news. However, some people suspect that the Dolphin Company are not just being nice people, but have said this because they cannot show Tokate and her health has been failing, costing a lot of money in caring for her. Eduardo Albor, the CEO of the Dolphin Company, has said that finding a better future for Tokate is one of the reasons that motivated them to acquire the Miami Sea Aquarium. Whatever their reasons, it gives hope that Tokate could be removed from her pitiful concrete tank to an environment more fitting for such a magnificent creature. But there is a lot to do before she can be released. Her health is a matter of concern. She has been quite poorly with a respiratory problem and at one point she was close to death. Monthly reports on her health by independent vets are made publicly available and at the time of writing she was stable but still receiving antibiotics. Tokate's on-site vets have been working collaboratively with independent vets in a bid to improve her health. Her pool has had some upgrades to provide her with cooler, cleaner water, and an enrichment plan has also been developed for her. So how does one go about releasing Tokate back into her native waters? Well, the most likely scenario is that she will be released into a sea pen and not the actual open water, and it is all going to take a long time to come to fruition. Federal regulatory agencies like NOAA and the USDA first need to approve such a move, which will take time, but a plan of action is in place for her already. The Whale Sanctuary Project, in collaboration with the Lumi Nation, has drafted a comprehensive operational plan to release her into a secure and protected area within the Salish Sea. In this way, she will still receive the care that she needs whilst residing in her native waters. Tokate not only needs to be healthy enough to be able to survive the stresses of such a huge move, but also so that she poses no threat to the southern resident orcas or the Salish Sea ecosystem. Another aspect of the plan is a conditioning plan. From the information I found, it is unclear exactly what this entails, but I'm guessing it means such things as acclimatising her to the water temperatures she will face in her new home and training her to enter a sling to be moved from the tank and transported. There is also a transport plan for each leg of the journey from Miami Aquarium to her sea pen, along with protocols for Tokate's on-site care once she is in her new home. These include her initial introduction to the habitat and the transitional phase of her acclimation, as well as her long-term ongoing care and security. And finally, there is a review of the potential ecological risks and mitigation strategies, identifying any gaps in knowledge where more data is required. Each stage of the plan includes detail about the equipment, personnel and safety required. It also includes a budget for each stage. So like many others, I eagerly await for more news on the health of Tokate and the progress being made in securing her relative freedom. It is going to take a long time before she can be moved. It could be up to two years, and many people have expressed concern as to whether she would survive such an arduous ordeal, but I personally think it is worth the risk. I like to think of her swimming in an area vastly bigger than her concrete tank, enjoying her well-deserved retirement, and maybe, possibly, making contact once again with her mum. What a beautiful thought. If you have enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.